everybody and welcome to another exciting hair raising fun filled expeditious episode of Radio Rama where as the name implies I show you how to work on radios but sometimes other stuff too like televisions and stereos and whatnot and today we have a 1935 RCA model 118 it is a five tube set the original price of this in 1935 was around $40, which was about double the cost of a regular five-tube set. It's got um, several bands. I think it's got shortwave and uh, regular broadcast. Uh, let's take a look in the back here. Here are the locations of the tubes here. We have a 80, 41, 6B7, 60, 66A7. We have one, two, three, four RF transformers. It's probably got a little more sensitivity, obviously. We have a pretty nice, thick, beefy tuning condenser. Field coil speaker. Looks like we have the original cloth covered cord. It's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, I'm not going to plug it in. One of the first things I see is this white stuff spewing out of the top of this electrolytic capacitor. That is no good. That uh, means probably that electrolytic has shorted. Now, I think, I've worked on this model before, I think there's also an electrolytic up front. That's a cardboard box that has an electrolytic capacitor inside. Anyway, Let's take the chassis out and see what's going on, whether it's been worked on. Something of this era most likely has at some point in its life, uh, but you never know. It's kind of annoying. It does not have a easily detachable speaker. Instead, it's got a very long cord with the anticipation that you can take the whole thing out and leave the speaker attached. Well, it has been worked on. Very old husk of a dead spider. Not sure how much luck you had underneath there, buddy. I can't think of bugs wanting to get underneath the radio. But anyway, it looks like that one, possibly two, of the electrolytic capacitors were replaced at some point in the past. We have this guy and this guy. This Sprague Atom is 50s or 60s era. Yeah, you can see the positive of that electrolytic has been taken out of service. Where's the other one? The other one's right next to it. Oh, nice. What the previous repairman did is I chose to keep the positive of the old electrolytic in service, and they just soldered the new one over the top of that. I've seen that before. That's a stupid thing to do uh, because you can inadvertently cause that capacitor, sometimes they'll just come back to life. And if they're shorted in any way, tough luck. I remembered there was a little voice inside that was to me saying something about this radio was a big pain in the ass and I, I couldn't remember what it was and this is it. What they did here is they chose to make this sandwich of components. I'm trying to remember if there are caps that go underneath here or not. Let me get my flashlight out. Let me look down this way. It's hard to tell. Great, just drop my tools. I think they're all resistors underneath, so the capacitors are on top. And boy, do those capacitors look gnarly. It's like there's tar. Tar everywhere. In fact, there's tar coming out of the bottom of the transformer. It's not the end of the world. Sometimes they'll do that, especially if they've been running for years and years. But there seems to be a lot of it. A lot of tar. So I think what I'm going to do first is 
replace the electrolytic capacitors and then we'll slowly bring it up on the variac. I, I don't like the look of these capacitors though. I'm going to pull the schematic and hopefully it's a good one because RCA chose in many instances in this era not to mark the capacitors. They just have a part number. So you need something. You need a schematic so you can tell what values those are. I could probably take a rough guess by looking at where they are in the circuit, but you know what they say about guessing. Sometimes you can make things a lot worse that way. There's this big guy here too, and I bet there's two values inside that guy. Probably looks like this cap was replaced too. This guy's that has electrical tape wrapped around it, and maybe this guy too. That's a Mallory. And RCA probably used their own factory parts. So it's had some work, not a whole lot, but it's been done a long time ago. All right, well, I wanted a challenge, so I just got one, apparently. All right, so welcome back to two, the, the second day of working on the RCA. It didn't get very far first day because I had to go to a Christmas party at the Radio Museum, and we had a lot of fun. I did find this schematic, and luckily, the schematic even has a wiring diagram, which is a lazy, easier way of figuring out where things are. Here's that resistor board, and all the values are marked on all the capacitors. This makes life a lot easier. It's certainly not, it's not too bad. But indeed, that board is just resistors. And that means I don't have to pry it apart to get at it unless one of the resistors is bad. Hopefully they're not. Uh, let's see, there's the electrolytic cap. Yeah, the other little electrolytic, ugh, electrolytic. And it's not a very good print, but I can see enough. All right, let's start with the electrolytics and replace a few of the critical, let's see. There's probably some sort of critical cap that goes to the output tube, which is this guy. I think there's a cap here coming off of, what is that? Is that the grid? I can't tell. It's very hard to read this. Chilly today. Uh, out here it doesn't really get that cold, but it got down to about 45 degrees last night and I'm freezing. I'm not used to it anymore. I've lived here for 22 years and uh, I lived on the other side of the country for a long time where it would be like negative 20. <laughs> and now I'm whining, whining about it being 50 degrees. I would have killed for this weather back when I lived on the other side of the country. I kind of wonder what this dealy bob is. I've got like a push-pull slide switch. I'm guessing that must be the band switch. Let's see. What does the survey say up here? Range switch. Yep, that's what that is. All right, so let's let's replace these two electrolytics and maybe a few of these oozy, leaky, nasty-looking caps and uh, bring it up slowly on a very. I can see if it has any life. Okay, well I'm partially done here. I have these two electrolytics replaced and these two guys that were in this box. I'm a little concerned about that transformer. I was, I was looking here, and I mean, there's just a lot of goop. They, they leak a little bit, but not that much. So I'm going to replace a few more critical capacitors and then bring it back up on the Variac to see if it fries itself. I'm going to go ahead and wing it. I may regret this. I got it turned on and I got my Variac here. Will it turn to smoking ruin or will it work? Let's find out. Bring it up about 50% first and see if we have any pilot lights. I can't tell, they might be burned out. <laughs> Don't smell anything. I'm gonna flip it over so I can see the filaments. All right. Okay, let's try this again with the set upright. 50%. The pilot lights are maybe burnt out. I don't see anything happening here. I feel like I do hear a little bit of a hum. I'm bringing it up slowly, slowly, slowly.
Oh. I feel like I hear something actually. does work. I don't smell anything funny. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it on for just a few minutes and turn it off because if the transformer is cooked it will eventually get pretty warm and how warm and how quickly it gets warm is the determining factor on its health but it seems like it is healthy so we'll just have to see. Okay, so I'm, I don't know, about, let's see, 60% done with the recap job, and I was pulling this one out. It's like a little Easter egg. Consolidated Redhead brand triple sealed paper tubular condenser. I also love the illustrations on that. It's like some crazy dude. I guess maybe he's supposed to have red head, red hair or something. But I'm going to replace a few more of these guys. And test fire it and then since it's actually turned out to be a sunny warm day i'm going to take the cabinet out so i can start working on it see if i can rejuvenate its finish okay so i have replaced all of the capacitors and i've also when i'm looking here i'm wondering if actually the power transformer was replaced because all of its leads are spliced together so that tar that gooey melted stuff could have been from a transformer in the past. Now that I've got it fully recapped, I'm going to power it up, see if it still works. I hope it does. And then it's going to be time to start working on the cabinet. Contacts are filthy, but otherwise the radio seems to be working okay. All right, what I'm going to do is take a speaker out take this bad boy out into the yard, or the driveway rather, and start working on cleaning the cabinet up. Okay, now it's time to work on the cabinet. I'm going to use my favorite right product of all time. It's uh, Old English, and no, it is not the liquor. It is a furniture restoration product. They sell it everywhere, and the label always falls off, so if I were head of marketing of whoever makes this product, I would consider a different label. Anyway, let's see the set is not in horrific condition as far as to finish. It's just scratched wear and tear from being on the planet for 80 something years. So what I do is I liberally apply the old English. Then I get a paper towel. And you can see how that kind of obscures all those scratches and stuff. And you'd be surprised how much you can rejuvenate a finish even if it looks horrible. And there's people out there that feel that as soon as they see anything that has even slightly damaged finish, they'll immediately just strip it down. I'm not in that camp. I think that you should try to preserve the set's original finish if you can help it. Now, that said, if you want to strip the cabinet down and refinish it, it's your call. It's your radio. It's your choice. This is just my choice. So we're going to go over the whole thing with Old English. Let it soak for a little bit. And then what I'm also going to do while I'm waiting for that to soak in is clean the filthy chassis. I take it outside, have the wind blowing away from me, and I use a paintbrush to dust it off. Someday I need to get a compressor so I can blow it off better. All right, so next step I'm going to clean the chassis, and I just keep a really huge paintbrush. And again, you want the wind kind of blown away, which is why I have it facing this way in my yard. not that bad. I mean, it's dusty and everything, but the metal's in good shape. And I apologize for my overly loud washing machine, or clothes washer. I think it'd wake the dead. You can also make great work using a uh, leaf blower. So I got my electric leaf blower here.
there. That did quick work. But you get the idea. Okay, next thing we're going to do is clean the uh, chassis with a little warm soap and water. I like using this product called Simple Green. It's non-toxic, it's biodegradable, and I use a little bit of warm water on a cloth. Then we spray a little bit on that and just go over the chassis. Now, is this necessary? No, because chances are very high that people are not going to come over to your house and turn your radios around to look at the innards. I just do it because it's kind of satisfying. The other thing you want to do is, you see this kind of yellowish looking stuff? That is cadmium salts, and you don't want to you don't want to wipe it off dry, so I use a wet rag. Looks like there's not much cadmium salt on this. It looks like this was kept in a pretty dry place because the plating is still in good shape. There's no rust or discoloration, so even though it was super dusty, it seems like it was kept in a nice, stable environment, which is it's important for electronics of this era. Of course, you want to clean up the tubes and everything, but you get the idea. Sometimes it takes several passes, and uh, I don't know. I just like working with a clean chassis. It feels nicer. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is free up the tuner mechanism. It looks looks like it's a sort of pinch friction situation here. There's no tuning cord. It just bites into this little half moon plate here, but it's not moving because this is the bearings are all seized up. So I'm going to use uh, my Zoom Spout Oil. This stuff works great. One of uh, my friends recently told me about this. And I've been using 3-in-1 oil, which is, 3-in-1 oil is fine. It's been around for a million billion years. But this stuff works, in my opinion, a lot better. Let's oil this guy up too. Ah, too much. But So let's see if that makes any difference. Yeah, that's just super, super stiff. Alright, now it's starting to come around, come around a little bit. The idea is like you want there to be as little f resistance against that friction tuning mechanism as possible. I can see I'm going to have to do a lot of cleaning up and oiling of that to get this to work right. Alright, well I've been letting this guy run for about 30 minutes. And my transformer is cool to the touch. It's totally fine. Well, that's good. Anyway, um, I did clean up the rest of the chassis. It's looking a little bit better. I, but the pilot lights were burned out, so I replaced those. And I oiled up this mechanism so that now everything is tuning nicely. Yeah, you want to kind of use a liberal amount of oil on those bearing surfaces. Then it'll make your, your tuning a lot easier. Anyway, so far so good things are going okay um, the cabinet is still sitting outside letting the old English soak into it but I think the next thing to do is going to be to wax the cabinet okay the next stage is going to be using Caranuba paste wax wax radio welcome to day two well actually day three working on the RCA and um, I did complete the polishing job and I think it looks pretty presentable. Definitely not bad for an original finish. Yeah, there's some wear around the knob, but you know what? It gives it character. It shows it's been on the planet for a while and it was well loved. So what I want to do is continue working on the chassis. There's a few things electrically that I need to do, including adding a fuse, so that if this guy does indeed decide to let go, it'll take out the fuse versus the transformer. There's one wire that goes to this uh, RF transformer that's rotten. The rest of them are cloth, but for some reason they chose to use a rubber coated wire on this connection, and I don't like that, so I'm going to take this cap off here, and it should just lift up and I should expose where that wire goes, and I'll redo that. 
and then I'm going to add an audio input, which on this ca in, a, in a case like this, it's easier because you have isolation via the, the power transformer. So you can just go directly into the volume pot and the signal from your audio device will automatically cancel out the radio signal because it's, it's more, um, basically it's, there's, there's more driving it versus the AM. I'm, I'm not explaining this very well, <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's the case. Um, so let me get this tucked in so I can set this thing on its uh, top again and we can continue doing more electrical work. Okay, so it's pretty easy to get these caps off. There's screws on either side that just lifts off. And you can see exactly where this rotten wire attaches. And you want to keep the length of your wire approximately the same because the longer you make it, the more you could screw up the interference. I chose this cloth covered wire because it looks a little more vintage. And uh, so we'll just replace that guy. Even have the, it's interesting that the rubber O-ring is actually in pretty good shape. Usually these turn into rock hard rubber. But we'll re-solder that on there and put the cover back on. All right, there we go. We got the uh, nice new shiny cord installed. So now it's time to install the fuse underneath. Okay, so I've got the fuse installed. This is in between the incoming line and the transformer. So if things start to go haywire in the transformer or anywhere else. That's the first line of defense. It's a 1.5 amp slow blow fuse. Slow blow meaning it is going to blow a little bit more differently than a rapid blow fuse. What this accounts for is when you have tube powered electronics, when you turn it on there's going to be an immediate inrush to heat all those filaments and then things will start to calm down a little bit. So you'll snap a uh, rapid blow fuse a lot easier. So you want to have a little bit of a fuse that can take that initial energy absorption scenario. So now the next thing I want to do is add the aforementioned audio input feature which I'm looking the volume control is on the outside of the case here and it has one two three four legs so I might have to do an alligator clip test to see which one of these is which versus Bean doing the right thing and looking at the uh, schematic but usually it's the outer two legs this has a separate tone control. This is, wait a minute, let me see where this is going. This might be going to tone. Where's, where's that wire go? It goes all the way here. And then to this. And then there's a capacitor. That is connected to ground. So, I think that might be the bottom or the negative of the pot. And then, well, that's a black wire. Usually black indicates. Let me get my flashlight out here so I can really see. Oh, we got a green wire here. That, to me, screams and cunning radio signal. Let's see, where does that come out of here? And that's shielded. All right, that's another sign. Where's it coming out of? It's hard to... That goes here and then up to here. That... No, wait a minute. Never mind. There's the green wire right there. That's going to that RF transformer. Okay, dead giveaway. That is absolutely incoming radio signal. So this is the top of the pot and either this or this are the bottom. Doesn't really matter because the bottom, in this case on a transformer set, our incoming audio can just simply go to chassis ground. There's no guessing. All right, because I'm, I'm basically having a half guess on this. I've alligator clipped an audio signal in temporarily. Let's see if that succeeds in overriding radio and coming through the speaker. Of course, it's got to warm up, which is, I'm sure, real fun for you folks to wait for. Looks like it's not interrupting radio one one little iota. Mm, let me try the other lead. All right, that kind of works. It's a little quiet, in my opinion.
Well, there is a method you can use to uh, boost your signal a little bit. I'm going to run an isolation transformer here. This ratio is 110 volt primary. Let's start with 12 volts. 12 volts secondary. Now, clearly I'm going to have to use this because it does boost the signal to a much more satisfactory level. So to tell the user to put it on short wave to get rid of the radio interference. All right, that's what I thought. No biggie. Just have to uh, add that transformer in the mix. All right, so we got the new isolation transformer installed. And I, I know this looks ugly, but I always put a little glue over the top of it. So if for some reason it ever breaks itself free, there's nothing electrical in here that's going to uh, bump into that and cause uh, haywire, basically. But I use a Gorilla Super Glue to glue them down, and I've never had one break loose. So it's just me being obsessive compulsive. And so with that, I believe it's actually time to do some reassembling. It sounds surprisingly good for what it is. This was a kind of middle of the road, not cheap, but not fancy radio with a kind of small speaker, but it actually sounds pretty nice. Uh, so kudos to the RCA engineers of your. Anyway, I enjoyed working on this one. It was pretty grimy and it's definitely on the older side as far as the stuff I usually work on, but it turned out great. I think it'll make a nice set for somebody in the future. And, uh, they can listen to it and put it back in the daily use. We have a lot of people that get these things from our museum, and they, they do exactly that. They'll listen to their music in the kitchen. So it's better than letting them sit on the shelf or collect dust or whatever, or go to the landfill, which unfortunately a lot of these guys are starting to do. There's so many of them. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, I'll try to get to them below. I'm not doing a good job of that lately. I apologize. It's just been lots of life adjustments, new job, all this other stuff. All right, guys. Till the next time something comes across the workbench, I'll see you guys later. Adios.